going to show you how to find the maximum and minimum values of a quadratic function. So in the example that I'm going to use, the quadratic function is here f of x is equal to x squared minus 3x minus 4. And in part 1, we're going to find the axes crossing points for the graph of y equals f of x. So when it says find the axes crossing points, all it means is work out where your graph intersects the y-axis and the x-axis. So work out the coordinates of those intersection points. And here it says y equals f of x. It just means we're going to write down our function f of x here, but put it equal to y. So I'm going to start by doing that and write down the equation y equals x squared minus 3x minus 4. Now, if we start by looking at where this graph intersects the y-axis, you should know that when a graph intersects the y-axis, the x value is always equal to 0. So let's start by substituting x equals 0 into this equation to see if we can work out the value of y. So when x equals 0, the equation becomes y equals 0 squared minus 3 lots of 0 minus 4. So I'm just replacing these two x values with the number 0. So if I work this out, 0 squared is 0, minus 3 multiplied by 0 is also 0, so y is equal to minus 4. So we've already worked out where this quadratic graph crosses the y-axis, down here at negative 4. Now if we look at where the graph intersects the x-axis, this time the y-value changes to 0. Okay, So that's always the case when a graph intersects the x-axis. So I'm going to change the y-value to 0 this time, so that in this equation it becomes 0 equals, and then all of this. So, in order to work out the x values, I have to solve this quadratic equation. So you could use the quadratic formula, or this one can actually be factorised. So I'm going to factorise the quadratic and find the solutions that way. Okay, so remember when you're factorising, you're putting into brackets, these two numbers have to multiply to give negative 4 and add to give negative 3. So they should be negative 4 and positive 1. So my two x values are positive 4 and negative 1. Okay, so that means the quadratic graph crosses at positive 4 and negative 1. Okay, so when it says find the axes crossing points for the graph y equals f of x, We've done it, okay? I'm just going to write them as coordinates, coordinates now. So we have this point here, which is 0, minus 4, and then these two, which are 4, 0, and minus 1, 0. Okay, so there's part 1. In part 2, it says sketch the graph of y equals f of x and find the coordinates of the vertex. Okay, so we have to do a sketch of the quadratic from earlier. I've just done um, a neater sketch over here showing the points of intersection that we just worked out. So where the graph intersects the x-axis and also where it intersects the y-axis. The vertex is either the minimum point on the graph or the maximum. Sometimes it might say find the coordinates of the stationary point or it could say find the coordinates of the turning point, okay? They all mean the same thing as finding the vertex, all right? So something else I want to point out before we try and work out the coordinates is which way you have to draw the quadratic. Is the parabola this way up or is it upside down? Whenever the x squared term here is positive, so if it's positive x squared, like in this question, or um, 2 x squared, or 12 x squared, whenever this is positive, it's this way up. And whenever it's negative, so negative x squared, ne negative 3 x squared, and so on, it's the other way. Okay, so that's really important. So you can see I've drawn it this way up, because here it's positive x squared. So I'm going to show you two different methods to work out the coordinates of the vertex. Method one is to find the line of symmetry of this parabola. So the line of symmetry is always halfway between these points of intersection on the x-axis. So hopefully you can see there are five units between negative one and four. 
half of 5 is 2.5. So if I subtract 2.5 from 4, it takes me to here, which is 1.5. Okay, it's just a rough sketch. I don't have to mark all the numbers on this graph. I'm just going to mark 1.5 and it's halfway between there. So this is the line of symmetry of the parabola and the vertex point falls on that line of symmetry. So if this is the line x equals 1.5, we've already worked out the x value of our vertex. The x value has to equal 1.5 because it lies on the line of symmetry, okay? So x is 1.5. We've already found part of it, okay, this part here. To work out the y value that corresponds to this x value, all you have to do is substitute this number into the equation here. So to work out y, you change this x and also this x to 1.5, so that you have 1.5 squared minus 3 lots of 1.5 minus 4. And when you do that, you get negative 6.25. So there's the, va the value of y. So the vertex has coordinates 1.5, negative 6.25. So there is method one. Just to finish, I'd like to show you an alternative method for finding the coordinates of the vertex. And this method is called completing the square. Now, if you haven't heard of completing the square before, I do have another lesson on that if you'd like to watch to get some extra practice. So what you need to do first is start by writing out the equation, again, of the function. And this time we're going to complete the square. So rewrite the right-hand side of this equation in completed square form. So to do that, you need to have square brackets. First, I'm going to fill in the x value. This number here is always half of the coefficient of x. So half of negative 3 is negative 1.5 or you can write it as a fraction if you prefer. Then you have to subtract this number squared and then you would minus four. So this is just the method to rewrite in completed square form. So now I'm just going to calculate this part. So when I do that, the equation will now be written like so. Okay, so it's negative 6.25 if you work this out, which maybe you recognize from earlier. Now, if we look at the graph in this question, the vertex is here, and it's the minimum point on our graph. So that just means y is at its smallest at the vertex at, on this graph, okay? So I want to know when y is at its smallest, so just bear that in mind. If we look back at the equation here, y is at its smallest at negative 6.25, and I'll just explain why. If you consider square brackets, the smallest square brackets can ever be is always going to be zero. This can never be a negative number, because if you had a negative number inside the brackets, when you square it, it would give you a positive number. If you had negative three squared, negative three multiplied it by negative three is nine. So this can never be a negative number. The smallest it can be is always going to be zero. So if this is equal to zero, it's going to disappear. And our y value is equal to negative 6.25. So we've worked out the y value of our vertex. The x value can be found by looking at the brackets. Remember we just said this whole thing here is zero? Well, if the bracket is equal to zero, you can solve that to work out the value of x. You just add 1.5 to the other side. So x is equal to 1.5, okay? So you put your bracket equal to zero, and then you work out the value of x. So they are the coordinates of the vertex that we worked out earlier. Remember, if you're asked to do a sketch in your exam, make sure you indicate all the important points on your graph. So you don't have to label all the numbers along the x-axis and the y-axis, but do show the numbers of where the graph crosses the y-axis, where it crosses, um, I just called that the y-axis, and then the x-axis, where the graph crosses the y-axis, and if you can, work out the coordinates of a minimum point or a maximum point. Finally, just make sure you get the general shape of the curve.
correct as well. So in this question, it was a parabola and it's positive x squared, which is why I knew it had to be drawn this way up, okay?